Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick. And if you've ever seen any Kurtz Gesagt videos, you'll know that the animation is really cool and they give a lot of great information on top of that animation. Um, so I wanted to see if I could do something similar in the Godot engine. Uh, I tried to do something kind of simple relative to the complexity of what Kurtz Gesagt actually does. So we're just gonna go with a simple rotating planet. And uh, let's take a look at how it actually made that in the Godot engine using its pretty robust animation features. All right, so since I've drawn my planet, I wanna actually import each of the pieces of my drawing into Godot. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the grid snapping because I wanna make sure the positions of each of these elements is exact because that's gonna make our animation smooth and not like jittery when it switches between the different frames. So let me just draw in everything we're gonna animate or let me drag in everything we're gonna animate. The light 2D is what I'm gonna to use to mask this animation. So you won't be able to see anything outside of the boundaries of that light 2D. Um, I'm also gonna make some of these things apparent of the earth, which just will make this a bit easier from an organization standpoint. Um, I'm gonna add my texture to my light. Light texture there. Let's just drag that over so you can see it affects the uh, images underneath. But we're going to turn that off for now until we complete our animation. Um, so there we go. So those are my elements. Now let's add an animation. Oop. Let's add an animation player node. And I want to put, I think each of these, the clouds and the land on separate animation nodes because I'm going to be doing separate animations for them. So we'll need another animation player. And we'll just call one, let's say clouds. And the second one, land. There we go. So let's do land first. So I'm going to add a new animation. Let's call it land. Put it at like, let's say seven seconds. Okay, so the way this is gonna work is we're actually gonna have two versions of this sprite and they're gonna animate simultaneously. So I'm gonna duplicate the land sprite over here and then move it to the right. So it's gonna be scrolling to the left. So it's gonna start on the right and I wanna make sure to align the edges of these two sprites. There we go. So that's where the sort of grid snapping comes in. Um, so now I have my two land sprites. I'm gonna animate the first one. So I'm gonna add a property track for the first one using position. And its start position is there, so I want to keyframe that one. There we go. And let's see, all I need to do is, for its end position, is drag it off of my earth here. There we go, that's pretty good. And I'll keep frame that position. So I want this to be repeating, so I'm gonna turn on the repeating thing, or the looping button, and I want it to start as soon as the scene plays. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Get our first land mass is moving, and then it should snap back over. Okay, good. So basically what I want to do is animate the second sprite simultaneously. Um, and the second sprite, my second sort of land mass group over here, is gonna move to the original position of the first one. 
So if I know the original position of the first one, which is x at 128, y 0, um, that's where I want to move the second uh, sort of land sprite over here. So I'm going to add another track for the second one. Click OK, position, OK. So I want the original starting position. Keyframe that. And then the position I want to move it to is the position of the first sprite. So that's 128 on the x-axis, 0 on the y-axis. So I'm going to go here, put another keyframe in for land 2. I want that 128 and 0. There we go. So I'm going to keyframe that. And grid snapping really helps because when the animation loops, it snaps each of these sprites back to their original positions. So if I was trying to do this without grid snapping and just eyeballing it, it would just probably have some jitter or wiggle in there because um, I wouldn't be able to get the positions exact. But with grid snapping involved, should get a really nice sort of snap back to its exact position. There we go. It looks like both of them are animating correctly. Awesome. So that's the basic principle. Uh, at least for the animation part. So I'm going to apply this sort of same animation style to the clouds and I'll be right back. Yep, looks like my sprites are snapping back to their original positions correctly. So it looks like we have a rotating planet. Um, so this is the first part. The second part, we need to add our mask so you can't see the land or the clouds on either side of the planet. So let's do that now. To add the mask, I'm actually going to use my light 2D from earlier going to turn that on. So currently you can see the light is actually affecting the pixels uh, in the way that it does by default by just brightening them. Um, but if I come over to its properties over here and I set the light 2D to mix and I go to each one of the sprites that I want to mask behind that light and in its material settings I go to new canvas item material and then open up the uh, options for that and set its light mode to light only, it will only show up when the light is touching it. So go to land, material, new canvas item material, light mode, light only. And you can already see that it sort of clips it to the bounds of that light 2D. All right, there we go. So that's the basic principle. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of artifacting, some sort of weird jittery um, stuff. I don't know if you can see it right here on the edges at the equator. Um, I think that just has something to do with the way the sprites themselves have been constructed. But uh, it's not really that visible, especially if you're going to scale up or down your sort of scene here. But uh, now that we have the basic principles of the animation down, let's add some more stuff to the scene and make it look like the Earth is sort of floating in space. I'm going to add a nice little, oh, just drag it in here. I'm going to use the same light 2D to create a nice little atmosphere effect. So I'm going to put that behind my Earth sprite over here. And then I'm going to increase its size a little bit. It's at 1.1. And I'm also going to modulate it, basically just decrease the opacity. There we go. And drag it on the center. There we go. Looks kind of like a little atmosphere there. So I'm also going to add a color rect for the beginning of our space background. And we'll make that as big as the entire scene. There we go. Change that color. Sort of blackish purple. There we go. Good. So it's looking a little better. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is add some stars in the background using a particle 2D node. So we got our particles 2D. And over here in the settings, I'm going to go to process material, new particles. And when you click on that, you get all your options. Under 
textures, I'm going to load that sort of tiny little star sprite that I drew earlier. And there we go. So I want to center that on my planet here. It doesn't have to be exact, just somewhere in the center because we're going to expand the sort of range that the particles show up to greater than the screen. So let's go back to process material. We'll go to emission shape, make that a box, and we'll just say a thousand, a thousand. Probably more than I need on the y axis. That's fine though. Say 700. Let's get rid of that gravity so that when the particles show up, they don't actually move. So it kind of looks like stars twinkling. And we'll add, let's see. We'll change the scale, set the scale or the minimum scale at 0.25 and then set randomness at one. So basically every single one is going to be at a random scale between 0.25 and one, which is just 100% of its original size. And we'll set a color sort of variation here. Um, add a new gradient. And what I'll do is have the stars sort of fade out. So they'll start at their sort of full opacity here on the left, and by the time their time is up, they will fade completely out. There we go. And that looks pretty good, I think. Uh, let's go up to a mount and just add like a ton of them. Oh, it's probably blinking on and off a little too quickly. So what we can do is under time, we can set the speed scale, say 10%, so that blinks a bit slower. And pre-process, I want to set it, let's try five seconds, and that just makes it so it looks like they've already, a bunch of them have already appeared, so you don't have to wait the full amount of time. Because I actually have to put the Particles 2D node behind my Earth. I guess behind my Earth atmosphere. There we go. So now the particles are not showing up on top of the planet. So you can definitely play around with all of those options, but that's the basics of how you get a sort of infinitely scrolling, rotating planet in the Kurzgesagt style. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. I really want to thank you all for recently reaching 1,000 subscribers. Um, I got another devlog coming and some other cool stuff that I'm working on for this channel. But uh, hope to see you all in the next series of videos, and take care. Thanks. Kurzgesagt. Kurz, Kurzgesagt. Kurz, Kurzgesagt. 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 I think that's it.